The way I do web scraping these days is actually very different from how I did it a couple years ago. So now I'm pretty much always using an AI or LLM. I'm not really using selectors in the CSS anymore. And also what's very different these days is that we have SSR websites, server-side rendered websites. They have also changed the game of web scraping a little bit. Now I have something really new that I discovered for those SSR websites. So I quickly just want to show you some of the new techniques in web scraping that I think are important to know about, including for those SSR websites which are going to take up more and more market share because most websites want to have some kind of server-side rendering if you don't know what that is don't worry i'll explain everything and what i'm also doing more often now is using a proxy network and that's because those websites that you're scraping it has become really easy for them to detect that that is what you're doing you're taking their data they have all sorts of protection in place these days if you're going to scrape from your own computer you're going to get blocked very quickly so instead you don't want to make those requests from your own computer you want a proxy that does the actual request so data impulse provides those proxies and they can automatically rotate them so they will use an ip address for a couple minutes and then after another couple minutes they will switch to another ip address to make those requests and really scale up and really do it in a more professional manner so here you can see they mention it's a dollar per one gb check out their pricing in case you're interested you can find a link in the description and i'll use them throughout the video so all right so let's say we have some website here it's some kind of e-commerce website and i want to grab all the data from this page so traditionally what you would do perhaps is I can open up the dev tools here now traditionally what you can do is I can do a right click inspect and here I have a bunch of markup you what you could do is you can find some selector right so if I want to get the product title of each one I could see oh this is an h2 and then I can sort of select that in my code and that would be a lot of work so there is actually a trick if you go to the network tab here here you can see all the what's called fetch requests that are being made on this page so traditionally what happens is if you load the website what you're going to get initially is just like a shell they will just load like some html markup without the data so then it will have to make a separate network request to get the actual data and right? so here you can see I'm getting I can see that there was a fetch request being made when this page was loading right so here here, if I load the page one more time, you can see there is a fetch request. And then once the data comes back is when the spinner disappears and the actual product data is visible here. But this is very nice for us as web scrapers because we can get the data very easily like this. You can see it's just a nice network request here, returning a list of products here in JSON format. So that's very nice because we can just check it. We can just take a look at this URL. We can see it's some kind of API endpoint. I can just copy this, open this up in my browser just to check it out. And here you can see I now have all of the data for that website very nicely here. I don't have to work with these weird selectors that you will find in the HTML markup. There is a nice API endpoint that we can hook into to get the data, right? So in my code, um, I could just create a function called scraper. I'm using JavaScript here, but works similarly in Python, works all the same, it's all the same. Um, I'm just gonna fetch, make a network call to that particular API endpoint URL that we just found in the network tab. I will get back some JSON and let's see what I get if I try to run this script. I'm gonna say node scraper. Let's see what we get. All right, so here you can see I'm getting all of this data very easily, very nice. This is the ideal case for us as scrapers, a client-side rendered page, CSR, which basically means the data has to be processed here in the client, in the browser here, before it's complete. Right, so initially there is no data yet. That's why we see a spinner. It needs to get that data from that endpoint. We just get some shell here initially. And then when the data comes in, it's processed here, it's rendered here in the client. This is traditionally how it always worked. And it's really beneficial for us as scrapers because there's a nice clean separate api endpoint that we can also hook into as scrapers to get nice structured uh, data back like this now the bad news is that pages like this are not so common anymore so these days a lot of the websites they're moving to ssr so here i have the exact same page but this one is ssr meaning when i load the page here you will not see a loading spinner in fact what we're getting here is the complete page already rendered um, right here whereas here initially we just get this shell as essentially, and then it has to go out and get the data. Well, here, when I go to inspect here for the SSR, you will see in the network tab, when I load here, there is no, there is no API request because what we are getting here is not only the shell but the data also is already in here it's sort of baked in here already with the H with the rest of the HTML that process of taking the data and putting it in the HTML that has already occurred on the server it's rendered on the server already it's server-side rendered SSR and this has many benefits for the website owner it's uh, it's, it's going to be faster right because there's no loading there's no loading uh, spinner here it's just instant it feels very fast here 
I have to wait for the data as a user or I'm gonna leave, right? But here it's instant. So this is gonna be a huge part of the websites that you're gonna have to scrape at some point, pretty much all of them. And it's kind of annoying because we lose that trick, right? We want to have a nice, clean, separate API endpoint that we can hook into, but unfortunately there is none here. Now for an SSR website, sometimes, by the way, it may actually still happen sometimes that they have a separate fetch call for data. For example, when there is like an infinite scroll, so here there's pagination, but sometimes they have like an infinite scroll. So when you scroll down, it just loads more data. When you see something like like this make, make sure to check out the network tab because then they may actually still have fetch calls and a separate api endpoint that you can just hook into other than that we're going to be out of luck or is there maybe something else in an ssr website that we can hook into or figure out and help us and actually yes or at least i found something so on an SSR website, what you can try is you can open up the elements tab here to get all the HTML and below here you will find some really strange looking script. So there's a bunch of scripts here and actually if you take a look at the last script here, this is a really interesting one because this actually contains all of the data on the page. So on an SSR page, what you will often see is that there's going to be some element on the page that has all of the data actually. And this is not readable for us. But if I take all of this, if I just take this and dump it in ChatGPT, for example, here is some elements. I'm just going to paste all of that stuff that I found, right? Just a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to give it to ChatGPT, see what it can do with that. And now you can see I'm still getting the data. So here you can see I'm still getting all of that product data, just very similar to what we had before. Also now in structured output, right? So here, for example, we can see classic lace up shoe. So on the SSR website, indeed, we see classic lace up shoe. We can see there's a description, a price, description and price. And we also see a rating here, which is really interesting because we don't see a rating here. So with this trick, you could say, this is really beneficial because not only will we get the data that we see here, but it actually may contain even more data because this data is being used when the page is being rendered and so-called hydrated. And so the, the developer may use, let's say, a product, a product object, and it may use the title and description and price, but that object may also have other things that, that the developer hasn't used, but it's still in here. So if you use this, this, this sort of like API, it's not really a, an API endpoint, but if you use basically the API version of an SSR website, that's how I view it, it may actually give you more data than what, what is visible here. So I think that's pretty cool. And so the thing to know about this is this, we can see this is actually a Next.js website. So there are different uh, frameworks there are, but Next.js is a popular one. If you watch my channel, you know, I'm all about Next.js. And as a web developer, I can tell you, it's all going to the server, right? So there's a lot of emphasis on rendering things on the server. So this is going to be an important thing to know as a scraper, I think. By using this, you may get access to more data than what you would see here. But also in case you're using an LLM, um, maybe you are already using that because we don't want to deal with these weird selectors to get something we want. So maybe what you were doing is you were taking the entire HTML and you were dumping that into an LLM to get the data. And they're pretty good at that LLMs because it's basically just text processing. Instead of doing the whole HTML, try just using this because this is much more compact. So this is going to save you in tokens. It's going to save you money and also should be faster, right? Because it's much more dense collection of data here than if you would take the whole HTML from the whole page with all sorts of stuff in there that it doesn't really need. I think this is a much better way of going about it. So this is basically how I do scraping. Um, I use AI a lot, LLMs, and I use uh, a proxy and I use this SSR trick. So just to show you actually how all of that fits together, because I think that's the cutting edge scraping, right? So that's basically the cutting edge scraping stack that we have as of right now. And let me quickly show you how I implement that in code. Uh, it's going to work very similarly in Python. Uh, but let's say I want to get this particular element here, right? We want this one from this uh, website. I would make a fetch call to that page. Again, we don't want to scrape from our own IP address. We're going to get blocked super easily. So we want to use a proxy, right? So how do I use a data impulses proxy actually? Well, in the dashboard, it's very easy. I can set up from which country I want to make those requests. So for example, I may want to use Argentina and Austria, let's say. So I want to make the request from those two countries. So Data Impulse will use an IP from one of those countries and it will automatically change the IPs over time. So here I can say every 20 minutes it should change, it should change its IP. And then here it will give me the URL I should use, right? So make sure you don't show the login credentials to other people. I'm going to delete this after recording the video. And these are residential IPs. So with 
fetch, I can do the following. And so instead of going from my computer to the target website, the target website can very easily figure out what you're doing. You're going to get blocked in no time. Instead, I'm going to make a request to the proxy, essentially, Data Impulse, and Data Impulse in turn will make the requests to that target website. And since they have many different IPs, even if one IP gets blocked, they have many other ones, right? Of course, you should follow the rules of your... Uh, country okay so here i'm just using a library to uh, set up a proxy agent here's where i specify the url from data impulse right so here you can also see the countries i'm using argentina austria if i was going to use like belgium it would be other letters like that right so then here i can just use fetch as usual i'm going to make a request i will get a response and actually i will get all of the html as i'm just going to it's not going to be json so i'm just going to parse it like that. Now remember on an SSR website, we want to look for that script tag with this weird self dot underscore underscore next. And this may also change uh, because Next.js, for example, will have different versions. So in this case, it's going to be the, the last script that we want. Let's see. Oh, Copilot helping me out here. And let's actually see what we get if we just log. And actually this should be without curly braces. So now I'm going to log, I'm going to try running this script. Let's see what we get. All right, so here you can see I'm getting all of that, well, gibberish for us, but this is all we need, right? So this is what I would then give to an to an LLM. And I will tell that LLM, here is a script element I found. Right, let's try that again. Extract the data and give it to me in JSON format. And then I'm just going to dump it. I could do it, I'm doing it in JetGPT here, but you could use the OpenAI API as well. Right, so then uh, right after this, you would just have an API call to OpenAI. But you can see this is much more dense. This is going to take much fewer tokens than if you were dumping the entire HTML in here. And if you and you can see here, we're getting all of the data still right here, um, all the product data, including the rating, which we don't see here, but it was still part of that collection of data, which I think is pretty cool. So there may be some hidden data that you're going to run into. Proxies to scale the scraping up, an LLM to efficiently process data, and now we know how to deal with these SSR websites. You may also be interested in these other scripts, by the way. So for example, here, it's actually giving some meta information about the website. So in case you're scraping that. So I would say check out Data Impulse. I had a great time working with their product so far. If you really want to do it professionally or you want to scale things up, there's basically no way around it. You're going to need some kind of proxy because you're going to get blocked super fast. Different types of proxies, right? Residential IPs, data center, mobile, and they have it in many different countries, pretty much all countries in the world. So I would say check out Data Impulse. You can find a link in the description. If you use the link in the description, you can also check out the pricing. So here, as of recording, this is the pricing that they show you. So they show it's a dollar per gig and if you go and scale things up maybe you really need a lot of data it's even cheaper than that right so make sure you check out data impulse i want to thank data impulse for sponsoring this video i want to thank you for watching let me know what you think have a nice day bye